Oh, I'm sorry, but this is a party political broadcast. You know how boring they are. This one, I'm afraid, promises to be quite outstandingly tedious because it's all about proportional... I'm sorry. Oh, proportional representation. And don't complain to me if it's boring, because I know in advance what I'm going to say, so the level of boredom I shall suffer during the next ten minutes will be really appalling, compared even with yours. Anyway, I expect there's some snooker on another channel. Probably on all three. So... Proportional representation, what's it all about? Let's look at the number of votes cast at the last election. Please. 1983 election. Conservatives got 42% of the votes. Labour got 28%. SDP, Liberal Alliance, got 26%. Now, here's the number of seats they got as a result. Conservatives, 397. Labour, 209. SDP Liberal Alliance, 200... Oh, only 23. Oh, look at it this way. On the left, the share of votes cast. Conservative, Labour, SDP Liberal Alliance. On the right, the seats. Conservative, Labour, SDP Liberal Alliance. This is ludicrous. Or, as children would say, not fair. Not fair to us voters. It took 40,000 voters to elect a Labour MP, only 33,000 voters to elect a Conservative, and it took 10 times that number, 340,000 voters, to elect one Social Democrat or Liberal MP. Well, proportional representation, PR, is about making that fairer, making the representation, the number of seats, proportional to the number of votes cast. If you get twice as many votes as someone, you get twice as many seats. All right, so I suppose I've got to tell you now how it works. You know, at this moment, hundreds of thousands of people in this great country of ours are heading for the kitchen for a cup of tea. So, for the rest of you, here is a 40-second guide for PR. Actually, there are several ways of doing PR, but this is the one the Alliance reckons is best for the UK. Now, at the moment, the UK has 650 constituencies returning one MP each. Under the Alliance's new system, there'd be a smaller number of bigger constituencies, about 140 of them, returning, on average, four or five MPs each, roughly like this. Each one of these is a new constituency. So, you get a voting paper like this. Now, instead of putting an X against the person you want, you put one against them, then two against the one you like next best, third choice, fourth choice, and so on. That's it. All the rest is the polling officer's problem. There. 40 seconds. I'd like to welcome you all back with your cup of tea and tell you that a promise in a party political broadcast has just been kept. Oh, they'll be singing and dancing in the streets tonight. So, if we'd had PR at the last election, instead of that, we'd have got this. Much fairer, yes? So, if PR gives us a fairer result, what are the objections to it? One, some people say it's a cranky idea. Right, let's take a look at Europe. Here are the countries with PR. Vera, Holland, Norway, Portugal, Denmark, Italy, Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Finland, Sweden, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, Spain, Austria. France, well, that doesn't have PR true, but it will have next year. So, the only countries that aren't cranky are the UK and Monaco. Oh, sorry, Monaco has got PR. And so has Andorra. Wherever that may be. The only countries in Western Europe without PR are the UK and the Vatican City. And the Pope tells me he's thinking about it. So, what's the second objection to PR? Some people ask, why change the old system? It will lead to instability. I disagree. One of the main reasons for advocating PR is that the present system encourages far too much change. Swings from right to left and back again. From nationalization to denationalization to renationalization to privatization. Swings which make long-range planning impossible. So PR will bring greater stability to the UK. Next objection. 
Well, some people claim peacetime coalition governments are weak and indecisive. Right, well, let's look at Europe again, shall we? Let's examine some of the countries that have been suffering from weak, indecisive coalition governments. Germany, Holland, Sweden, poor, wretched, enfeebled things. Denmark, Switzerland, they make your heart bleed, don't they? Norway, they're on the scrap heap too. If only they could all get rid of their weak, indecisive coalition governments, perhaps they could have a standard of living like ours. Thank God, Britain's got strong, decisive, one-party government, which, in 1985, achieved for the first time in our history a lower standard of living than coalition-riddled old Italy. Next objection. PR is too complicated. The voter won't understand how it works. Well, yes, if any of you can't count up to five, you'll find it pretty bewildering, I'm afraid. Fifth objection. What's going to happen to your local MP? A perfectly sensible question. Under the present system, everyone has a local MP, someone they can approach if they need help. This is a very great advantage. The disadvantage of the present system is that the odds are that you didn't in fact vote for your local MP and that you'd really rather talk to someone you feel more sympathy for. Well, with PR, this new system, there will be four or five MPs in your constituency so that you can choose which one you want to talk to. Digression. Supposing you'd rather talk to a woman. Have you any notion how poor the representation of women is in the House of Commons? There are 25 women. 625 men, 25 women. Well, under PR, there would be more women in Parliament. Compare Europe with us. In the UK, 4% of the House of Commons are women. Netherlands, 20%. Denmark, 24%. Norway, 37%. Also, do you know how many MPs there are who are members of ethnic minorities? Exactly none. I think this is not right. So, to sum up, one, PR operates throughout Western Europe and has all party support here. Two, it's change, yes, but change to give us greater stability. Three, coalition governments in Europe are doing a lot better than we are. Four, you'll have several local MPs, so you can talk to the one you like best. And five, the system is too complicated for the British. Ha, ha, ha. The single greatest advantage of PR is that it will give us a House of Commons that reflects better how we vote. That is, reflects the balance of opinion in our country. And that better balanced House of Commons will give us more balanced policies and increase the amount of discussion, cooperation and compromise. Compromise is not a dirty word. It means two people who disagree to start with come to an agreement. What's healthier than that? In fact, historians used to talk about the British genius for compromise. Well, perhaps we can rediscover that genius. Perhaps we've got to. There's far too much conflict and divisiveness in this country. Class conflict, racial conflict, north-south conflict, management union conflict, party conflict. And I suggest that a lot of it is created by a two-party system where each group says that everything they do is right and everything the other group does is wrong. One of the things I like best about David Earn is that if Mrs. Thatcher or Mr. Kinnett does something he agrees with, he says so. We need more of this attitude. So, if you see some truth in what I've been droning on about, if you've ever listened to the recordings of the House of Commons and feel we should get rid of some of the yaboo politics, as David Steele calls it, please consider supporting PR. Even vote for it at the next election by voting for the SDP Liberal Alliance, even if you never intend to vote for the Alliance again. Then, if the Alliance holds the balance of power, they'll be able to force a referendum on PR so that you can decide whether you want it. And if you agree with PR, and the opinion polls say the majority of you do, please phone 0272 272 272. That's 0 272 272 272. Or write to David Owen, the SDP, Free Post, London, SW1P, 3BR. Was it all right? Yes. Okay.